Hello, my name is Martin Woodward and I work for a company called Team Prize. I'm based up in Antrim in Northern Ireland and have been using Team System in the real world for over three years now. Microsoft asked me to pop down today to give you a quick tour around Team System and highlight some of my favourite new features in a 2008 release. So what's Team System? At the heart of Team System sits Team Foundation Server. Team Foundation Server enables team-wide collaboration by providing a single team server for all the project artifacts. TFS supports team communication and includes work item tracking, reporting, version control and a fully revised build system in the 2008 release. All this data is held in a SQL Server database backend. These repositories are controlled by a fully customizable process template that describes how your team works, what types of work items they should track and what data should be reported on that sort of thing. On your team's desktops you install a Visual Studio Team Edition. This is a souped up version of Visual Studio coming in several flavors, one for architects, developers, database professionals and testers. Each version contains additional functionality on top of the regular Visual Studio for each of these types of people. You can also get Visual Studio Team Suite which contains a lot. For people who don't live in the IDE all day long, there are great integrations into Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Project that allow the work items to be managed in those applications. Also, there is a web-based client to Team Foundation Server that allows people to enter and edit work items, manage builds and view files from source control all from your favourite web browser. This is an addition to the existing SharePoint portal that's created for each team project, which means you get to use all the power of SharePoint as well as Team Foundation Server to help your development team collaborate. If it's not enough, Microsoft supports a vibrant third-party tool community with Team System. My own company, TeamPrize, is an example of this. We provide the cross-platform integration into Team Foundation Server so that parts of your team who are using the Eclipse IDE or are running on the Mac or Unix-based systems can all still be equal members of a team using Team Foundation Server. Finally, all the APIs and events that are used by Team System Product itself are available for you in your organization. Microsoft obviously realises that every, every company is different and so Team Foundation Server has been built with extensibility and customization in mind. Enough talk, let's show you what Team System looks like. Here we have Team Suite running in Windows Vista. If we look in the Team Explorer, we are talking to Team Foundation Server 2008, which is actually running on a Windows Server 2008 box. In the interest of time, I've already created an example team project on the server called AdventureWorks. As I mentioned earlier, there is a SharePoint portal site that is created of each team project and I can visit by right clicking on the team project. As part of the process template, you can customize what the portal looks like, but here is one out of the box using the MSF Agile process template that ships with Team Foundation Server. Let's take a look at the new team system web access. From the browser, we can create a new work item. I'm going to create one called uh, Build Wallboard Project Automatically and this is a task for me um, and I'm going to create a continuous integration build and run our unit tests uh, every time we check in the code. Back in Visual Studio, if we look at what work items we want to work on, here we can see the one we just created in Web Access. So let's go do it, let's go automate the build. This is for our wallboard project. We set up the workspace to include the files we want. We'll then create a new project file, tell it to build our solution, run any unit tests that it finds in assemblies that end in a name tests. Retention policy controls how many builds you want to keep by default, which is very handy when you're doing continuous integration. We can tell Team Foundation Server which machine we would like to build on and where to drop the binaries when the build is finished. And then finally we set up our build trigger. We could go for a scheduled uh, date like a daily build, um, but my usual preference is to build on every check-in, which is what people call continuous integration. Now we force the build to run to check everything is going okay. 
The Build Explorer allows you to manage your builds inside the IDE. You can see what builds are queued, which ones have completed. You can also go and watch the build results as they come in. Here we can see the build running. Here we have a partially succeeded build. This is because our code compiles fine, but our unit tests have failed. Someone must have forgotten to run the test before checking in the code. We can see what tests failed and why. If you wanted, you could create a work item to ask someone to fix this. So let's do that. Let's create a bug and we'll assign it to me. There we go. Now let's open this solution from source control so that we can fix the problem. First, let's make sure we have the latest version of the code from source control. Let's then run the tests on our local machine just to see if we still have the problem. Yep, we do. So let's look at that test that failed and see what we got. We got slash foo back when we meant to get foo. Uh, this looks like a classic bit of string manipulation problems. Looks like we've forgotten to add one to an index or something. Before I fix this, I'm just going to check who broke the class originally by doing an annotate on the code. Oh, uh, looks like it was me. I better get it fixed then. As I make the change, you can see that in the pending changes view, the file is automatically checked out for me. I'll rerun my unit test just to make sure it's fixed. All good. So I'll check the change in and associate it with the bug I raised earlier. If I go back to Build Explorer, the build will have already started on the build server because we set it to run on every check-in, which is very handy. And there we have a successfully completed build. Perfect. The improvements in quality don't stop there. Now that I have a working build up and running, I can run some code metrics against my solution to see what parts of a solution I might want to refactor to make them easier to maintain. The code analysis function allows me to quickly find areas for improvement in my code using static code analysis rules that I can customize for each project. When making changes to improve the performance of my application, it's always best to figure out what areas are performing badly, and also if my attempted performance improvements have made anything better. The code profile allows me to do this. New in 2008 is a handy compare tool that shows me the differences between profiling sessions. And now, just because I can, let's pop over to the Mac and view our team project from there. We can do all the same stuff in source control. We can look at work item tracking. And there, there's that work item we created earlier and it's still assigned to me. Let's open it up and view it. And then we'll change the status to closed and save it. We can now even view our builds and manage them from other platforms such as this Mac. We can even create a new Team Foundation build from an Ant project if we wanted to. So let's do that for the Java Hello World project. And remember, all this data is stored in the same SQL Server database and reports run from a single data warehouse provided by a team system. You'll be able to track the progress of your project across all areas of your organization and give instant automated progress reports.
Believe me when I tell you we haven't even scratched the surface here as far as Team System is concerned. The functionality in the database professional SKU is amazing, allowing your DBAs to have stored procedures in source control is pretty cool, with the ability to run unit tests against the database is even more impressive. In the test edition, you have the ability to create web tests, load tests, and all that amazing stuff. If you want to learn more about Team System, including getting access to a trial version, then go to msdn.microsoft.com slash teamsystem. I've put a link to some recent case studies that show you how other companies have benefited from Team System, as well as some links to some popular Team System blogs, including my own. If you have any questions, and please do not hesitate to come up and speak to me after. You can also catch me around the event today, and if you have any general Team System questions, ask me then, or feel free to drop me an email. Thanks for your time.